Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the Japanese writing system. Uh, Japanese uses three different writing systems. These are kanji, which looks like this. Um, it's a logographic system, meaning that each character uh, is attributed with a certain idea. Lots of them derived from uh, real life. Uh, the characters are simplified images of actual objects, which they're supposed to represent, uh, such as the mountain, which looks like this simplified mountain drawing. The eye is this character, which is similar to the general shape, and the mouth is that simple open character, and so on. There are also two phonetic scripts, um, which can write things in a pronounceable way. Uh, based on the way that the Japanese um, sounds and pronunciation work, uh, they use a what is basically a syllabary, uh, and each character represents a certain sound, kind of similar to an alphabet, um, but I'll get on those later. Uh, they're called hiragana, which looks like this, and katakana, which looks like this. Here's a sample of Japanese text. Um, we have we have them displayed in a sans serif and a serif font just to show the two main ways that text can look. Um, in the red, we have the kanji, which are fairly complex. Um, we have the hiragana, which is in green. They're round. Um, fairly simple, and katakana, which are more blocky than hiragana, but also similar and fairly simple. You'll notice all three of these um, writing systems are used in a single time, in a single sentence. Um, that's just how Japanese works. You'll also notice there are no spaces. Um, Basically, the way that words are determined from each other is the way that the script or the writing system changes. So right here, you have one word. It gets separated by this uh, ga, which is basically a grammatic grammatical particle. Uh, and then this kiteru. Uh, all of this is just more grammatical parts. It's like a suffix for this kanji. Uh, they can also go onto separate lines um, without like trying to keep it all in one piece. Um, and yeah, that's just how it's written. It can be left to right, like in English, and most other languages that use a Latin script. Um, and it can... Traditionally, it would be written vertically, uh, from top to bottom in lines that go right to left, but mo most modern text will be written left to right in top to bottom rows. Now, we have the kana, which are the phonetic um, writing systems. Um, they can be used to write out the kanji to sort of show how they're pronounced, or they can just be used uh, as words by themselves. Um, they come from the Chinese hanzi, like, or the Chinese characters, um, except instead of just being the characters themselves, most of them, especially the katakana, are just pieces of the hanzi. Uh, and traditionally, a uh, woman would write in hiragana, which um, is fairly simple. Uh, the women were not seen as fit to write in a more complicated script like kanji, which the men would write in. And the monks created katakana, um, the Buddhist monks. Um, since they had to write lots of manuscripts and texts, um, it was difficult to use the complicated kanji uh, repetitively. So they kind of just used katakana as a shorthand for different meanings. Now, it's actually not a syllabary. Technically, uh, 
Japanese is, and the kana specifically are divided into more. A mora is a unit of um, equal length. Each character is one uh, mora long, and each mora is basically supposed to be pronounced for a roughly equal amount of time. For example, uh, the second person pronoun for you, anata, uh, each uh, character represents equal length of time, anata. Um, none of them is more drawn out than any other, nor are they stressed by the length. We also have the greeting, ohayo. Um, you, this is actually for more, since the Vowel U at the end is a mora of its own. We have a long vowel at the end. Ohayo, uh, not Ohayo. Uh, now, giving certain lengths of vowels or consonants can give different meanings to words. Like Oji-san means uncle, but Oji-san means grandfather. Um, there are also more extreme examples, but this is a fairly simple one I like to refer to. Um, you, there's also, for example, Oba-chan, which can mean auntie, or Oba-chan, which can mean uh, essentially granny. Uh, we also have the long consonants, like Ippai, which are marked by a shortened Tsu character. I'll get into this later. Um, these are also important to note. Um, just you have to be sure to pronounce it a bit longer, roughly the same length as any other mora. And we can also have um, basically consonants uh, combined with uh, basically the letter Y and a vowel after. For example, kyo. Despite being two characters, the second one's a shrunken character, so it modifies the one before it to turn it not into ki yo, but kyo. And the o u, so the yo, yo, and the u, is that's just a long o sound, not o. Although you'd probably be understood, that just isn't correct per se. Uh, here's what all of the hiragana characters look like. You'll notice um, every single character except for n has a vowel after it, or it just is a vowel. We only have five vowels in Japanese. These are a, i, u, e, and o. Um, and then in the k column we have ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. In s we have sa, shi. Su, se, so. She can use other vowels with it. Uh, for example, you can modify it to say sha or sho. Um, but these are just the base characters. Um, then in the T category, we have ta, chi, tsu, te, and to. Um, there are also some different sounds in this too, similar to shi. We, the chi and su are different than the normal t sound. Then in in, we have na, ni, nu, ne, no. In h, there's ha, hi, hu, he, ho. Uh, in m, we have ma, mi, mu, me, mo. In y, it's ya, yu, and yo. There are no characters for yi or ye. These aren't really natural or normal in Japanese. And then we have the R column. Uh, it's actually not the same as the R pronunciation in English. Um, it's sort of between an R and an L, uh, but it might actually be more close to an L. It's what's called a flap consonant. Um, it's sort of similar to the T in water. You just quickly touch your tongue to the roof of your mouth, specifically the hard palate. Um, to get the sound, 
uh, they sound sort of like la, de, du, da, di, du, de, and do. Although it can be difficult for foreigners like myself to pronounce. Then in the W column we have wa, we, we, and wo. Again, no wu. And then we and we are pretty archaic characters that are very rarely used, especially in modern Japanese. And then we have mm, uh, which is just the N sound, although sometimes it takes on more of an NG mm, sound. So hiragana can be used to phonetically write out kanji. It's usually done in furigana, which is shown below. Uh, this is actually just the word furigana. Uh, these three characters here are um, kanji characters, but they have uh, hiragana above them to indicate the sounds that they make. This is just to show people uh, how a word would be pronounced, since you can't really tell just from the kanji alone without already knowing it. It can also be used for grammatical particles, which are similar to prepositions in English, uh, except they're postpositions. They modify what, what it comes after rather than what it comes before. It can also be used as what are basically suffixes to kanji. For example, if you take a kanji and add a character with an e sound to it, it will often just change that to an adjective or if you add something that ends with an u, it will often just change that to a verb. They can also write out words by themselves. You don't have to do the furigana. Uh, sometimes one may write out um, words with just hiragana. Um, although there are certain words and phrases that are done this way specifically, most words will usually just take the kanji in most cases. It can also be used for emphasis, similar to italics, or just stylistic choice if one likes the way they look uh, in a certain context. And they can be used for uh, onomatopoeia, onomatopoeia. Um, especially nonverbal uh, speech, like if one were to go, ah, that would just be written with hiragana, hiragana usually. Now, here are some examples of hiragana usage. Uh, we have the sentence, Watashi no heya wa kitai, kita nai. Uh, this means, my room is dirty. Now, no and wa, uh, as shown here, are particles. Um, everything else except for the i at the end is kanji. Um, and Basically, these just give certain uh, grammatical meanings to the words. No is possessive, so it turns watashi, me, or I into my. And the wa is the topic marker, uh, which just states what you're talking about. Now, you'll notice, you may have noticed, um, this is normally ha, but in, in the case of a particle, it's pronounced wa. Um, lot, sometimes the particles are just pronounced differently um, from their normal phonetic forms, but this is just how it is, uh, and you'll have to learn them. Uh, here is an example of the hiragana being used like a suffix um, for a kanji. If we take this uh, kanji here, uh, which by itself is pronounced nama, meaning fresh or raw or live. Uh, it, and we add kiru to it, it becomes ikiru, which means to live one's life. The meaning is sort of related, and just adding that changes the pronunciation and the meaning. There are also some phrases like konnichiwa, uh, or roughly good day which is usually written in kana. Um, we have ohayo gozaimasu, which roughly means good morning um, 
in a polite way. This is usually written in hiragana. And we have sayonara, which is a long goodbye, also often written in the hiragana. Now, there are additional characters that can be used um, in the hiragana, also katakana, I'll get to that later. Um, so you'll see here, if we add this diacritical marker, um, ka becomes ga, ki becomes gi, etc. Ks become Gs. Um, basically, these turn unvoiced consonants into voiced consonants. Uh, ka and ga use the same uh, movement in your mouth, throat, etc. Except when you use ga, that's actually using the vibrations of your vocal cords, uh, which you can actually feel um, when you pronounce them differently. The same goes for uh, sa. Uh, all the s ones just become z, except that there is a shi, which becomes g. Basically, s h to j. Um, then we have ta to da, te to de, to to do. Um, but chi becomes this symbol, which is pronounced exactly the same as g. However, it's pretty rare, so in most cases, actually, in some cases it will transform to G in spelling, but sometimes there's a word in old uh, kanji that's just traditionally spelled that way, so in some cases they will keep the vocalized chi. Now, tsu becomes this um, voiced zu, which is... In at least the Tokyo dialect, Tokyo, um, it's pronounced sim basically the same as zu. However, it's from tsu, so it's a bit um, odd. Now, the H row actually has two different diacritics you can use. Uh, if you add the typical one, you get the H turns into a B. Ba, B, Bu, Be, and Bo. But you can also add the plosive uh, circular sound. Uh, this will give you Pa, Pi, Pu, Pe, and Po. Now, you can, as I've mentioned earlier, you can also add the shrunken Y characters. So you can turn uh, Ki or Gi into Kya, Gya. Uh, q, g, q, g, n, 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 d, 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 etc. However, there are some exceptions to this. Um, in characters that don't have like a row of that specific sound, such as shi, uh, just one character, there is no sha or sho by default. Um, you can get sha, shu, or sho just by using the shrunken y character. Um, so now we are uh, moving on to katakana. These again are much blockier than hiragana. Um, these are often used from transliterating words from other languages. Uh, Japanese, especially in the modern day, has tons of loan words from other languages such as English. Uh, it can be used as emphasis uh, or stylistic choice. Uh, also, like uh, scientific words and technical terms are usually written in katakana, but these usually come from uh, other languages already. Uh, we also have company names. Um, Unless it's like a family name that would, which would normally be written in kanji, lots of them are written in katakana, and then it can also be onomatopoeia, um, like sound effects and stuff. Uh, here's an example from a manga, Chi no Wadachi. You have the sound effects of the door opening, uh, gacha, 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 and then once it opens, you get the gi uh, sound effect. Um, 
And katakana, since it's used for sounds that aren't normally in Japanese, you get some additional uh, uses, I guess. Um, how you can do this with hiragana if you wanted, but it's more typical in katakana because uh, just the way it works. You can give more shrunken characters like web saito. Uh, you get the U character and give it a shrunken E. Uh, of course, there's no Y-E character, so they just use the vowel alone. Or in a name like Dio, you'd use the shrunken I. Um, now, usually, in if you tried using the character from that row with the I ending, you'd get Geo. So normally they do the one that ends with an E and a shrunken eye, if they want to get that sound with an eye. And then for long vowels, you'll often see a dash character like this, which looks basically the same as the number one kanji, ichi. Um, you can use the vowels by themselves if you want. In computer, you could just add a U there, or in kura, you could add the U character and the A character. But usually it'll just be the dash symbol. And then you also have some special um, diacritics. Like you can just take the character for the letter U and add the diacritics to turn it into the letter V. But since it's an abnormal sound in Japanese, lots of times it will just be pronounced like a B anyway. Um, now, this would be vu, by the way. Um, vu or bu. But lots of times it will just be written as a B character rather than V, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, now, you technically could add diacritics to other abnormal characters. Like, you could add one to A to make it like representative of a more... Um, like loud um, version of the a, ah, like yelling or something, which may actually be done in uh, hiragana usually. But most times these are really rare and they can be deducted what they're meant anyway. Now, I'm just going to cover how katakana might be transliterated in this section. Uh, lots of the consonants just stay as is, but since Japanese is fairly limited in the sounds that it has, uh, there are some exceptions that need to be made. If you have uh, an F character, since the only F is fu, um, it may use a shrunken vowel, like in famicom, um, or it may just use the H equivalent. Like in the word for coffee, you have kohi. Uh, if the special character doesn't have the shrunken e option, um, they may just use the shrunken e character. Uh, like there's no j, so they'll use g with the shrunken e to get j. And sometimes they don't even shrink it at all, like es, which can be yes. Or it can also be Jesus from the Latin Iesu or Iesus. Uh, L and R both take the what is attributed as the R column, which is uh, not quite the right sound, but it's close enough. Uh, like you have Roboto for robot and Aris, which is the transliterated form of the name Alice. Um, then, in cases where the consonant would normally not have a vowel after it, since Japanese has to do that, they'll usually pick the one that ends with U, uh, but if that's um, not the right sound, uh, like in the T row, you'd get TSU. So they'll use the one with the O ending most times in this case. For example, mic for a mic or a microphone, or speedo for a speed. Now the X character, um, this will often just become kusu, 
with the KU and SU character. Um, but sometimes, since there there may be a character after X, like the I in Maximum, uh, sometimes they'll change the K to give basically the one that rhymes with it. So, Makishimamu, Maximum. Uh, now, for the vowels, there are, again, technically only five of them in Japanese, so exceptions may need to be made. Er endings in English are usually just replaced with a, like a doraiba would be driver. Uh, a short I, um, like in Latin, uh, may use the E or the E characters, like Latin America. Latin America. Um, wait, Latin America. It uses the T character. Um, and because there's no short I sound. And then Kurisumasu. Not, they choose to use the D in this scenario. The mid central vowel, or a, uh, is usually just replaced with an a, uh, like gum for chewing gum. Although I also see gumi for gum um, sometimes. So it depends. But I think it's usually a. Uh. And then the o character is almost always the Japanese o, even if it's pronounced more similarly to a. Uh, like, um, you have monsta for monster instead of mansuta. Uh, now, the words also get shortened a lot of the time. For example, television becomes terebi, and animation becomes anime. Now, I used a random word generator. It just generated six completely random words and tried to translate transliterate them into katakana, the way they might be pronounced. For chauvinist, we have shō... shōbanisuto. Uh, for folklore, we have hokuroa. For guarantee, we have geranti. For lesson, we have lesson. For champagne, we have champagne. And for trend, we have torendo. Now, I don't think this U character is supposed to be there, so you can just ignore that. Now, the kanji, uh, lots of them are just directly taken from Chinese characters, or hanzi. Um, it, now, hanzi is actually not pronounceable in Japanese. That's where you get the name kanji. Um, basically, the pronunciations were taken from how the Japanese interpreted the Chinese, uh, or at least how they adapted it into their own speaking system. Now, some of these changed in looks. Um, they may have simplified them, and they may have, or they did, make some of their completely original um, kanji that used similar rules to how the uh, Chinese characters were made. There are also two main readings that every uh, kanji character has. These are the onyomi and the konyomi readings. The onyomi are taken directly from Chinese, all, again, adapted to sound Japanese. And then you have the konyomi, which are basically the words that the Japanese had before they had a writing system, which they basically just attributed to some characters. Uh, regardless of if it's proper or not. Uh, now, Japanese characters can have many different readings based on certain contexts. Uh, like, if you were to write out the phrase konnichiwa using the kanji, it would be the equivalent for the word today, uh, or setting the topic as today. Um, so it could also be read as kyo wa but I guess that's the reason it's normally written in hiragana. Both are fairly common phrases. Uh, now, most words are written with kanji. Um, there's an educated feel to them. Uh, that's one of the reasons they've remained in use. 
um, just because people have to learn them, and it shows that people are educated if they can read. Uh, and since Japanese has uh, such a limited sound pool, there are so many um, words that would use the same characters kana-wise, so kanji really helps to differentiate them. Now, in speech, they're differentiated by pitch accent, uh, meaning different stresses based on highs and lows of the pitch um, help to distinguish the meanings, as well as context, but I won't really get into that in this video. They're also used to write um, family names uh, phonetically. The meaning doesn't really matter at all. For example, you have ta naka make up the name Tanaka, which the characters literally mean rice field and middle, but that obviously doesn't exactly make sense, unless the family was originally like rice farmers who were in the middle of the field. But yeah. There are also over 2,000 Jōyō kanji, which are the regular use kanji. Uh, there are about this many you have to know about that many to read a newspaper. Um, that's like a good um, goal to aim for, for being literate in Japanese. Although there are many kanji, over 9,000. In fact, over 50,000 uh, exist, but lot, most of these are obscure and aren't actually used. Uh, now, here are some examples of how kanji may be used together to alter the pronunciation. Uh, for this character, which means person, the onyomi readings are nin and jin. The reason there are separate ones is because uh, they came from different time periods. And for kunyomi, the Japanese readings, we have hito uh, and to. Now, the typical one, uh, when it's just by itself, when you're saying a person, you say hito. Um, but if you put the character for big next to it, it becomes otona, which is an exception, really odd pronunciation. Uh, if you put it by the character for one, then you get hitori, which means alone or just a single person. If you put by the character for construction, you get jinko, which uh, is like artificial. Um, if you put by the character for three, you get sanin, three people. Futari is a couple. And if you put by a country like America, you get America jin, or an American. Now, this one in particular, I feel like it has a lot of different strange variations um, and exceptions, but these are just some examples. Kanji are also composed of radicals. Um, these are pieces that build up the kanji. Every kanji uses at least one of these characters. Um, and they're also listed by their stroke order. A single radical can take up to 17 strokes. Um, here are some examples of radicals. Uh, sometimes the context makes sense, but sometimes they don't. Uh, for example, we have uh, the character for heart or mind, which um, it, by itself it would be pronounced shin or kokoro. But when you put it in this kanji with the reru, you get wasureru, uh, meaning to forget. Or uh, in this context, it means omo, or it's pronounced omo. And that means to think or consider something. This makes sense with the notion of the mind. Um, they're, they're kanji that can be used by themselves as words or character or radicals that can be used by themselves. Uh, this is an example of them. It can be used by itself, or it can also go into kanji like this. There's also ones like this, which can... This one means roof, but it isn't ever used as a kanji by itself, unless you're referring to the radical. Um, but this one doesn't exactly make sense. If you put the roof 
uh, radical above the woman radical, you get yasu, which means cheap. Um, sometimes these don't exactly make sense, but sometimes they do, like up here. Uh, but they don't really need to. For example, in English, the letters that make up a word don't, each letter doesn't even have a meaning. That's just how they're spelled. Um, now, similarly to radicals, there are kanji that can be used by themselves and ones that can't. Uh, you'll, it all depends on context. Uh, there are also specific stroke orders. Um, here's the kimi, or also the kun suffix for names. Uh, kimi is a second person pronoun, uh, similar to the word buddy. You can see there are specific ways you have to draw it. Um, this helps to keep it like, the, it keeps it in order when it gets sloppy, um, so you can tell what it is. Um, doing it the wrong way is just improper, and it often makes it look wrong, especially with calligraphy. Now here's also a chart of how many radicals um, different kanji have. It looks like most of them are between 5 and 10 strokes, but it really dies down after around 15 or 20. Most of them don't have quite that many, but it's around that level. Uh, now I'm going to talk about dolmaji, or literally Rome characters, which is the Latin alphabet as used in English and many other Western languages. Uh, these are you, Romaji is usually not used in the English itself. Uh, I mean, it's not used in Japanese, but in other languages, it's used so people can pronounce the words. Um, so I, I'm going over this after all the other systems just to give a way to, so you actually understand the pronunciations first. Um, basically, the valid combinations would be any of the vowels uh, or any number of valid consonants, usually just one or two, and then a vowel after. Um, but sometimes, uh, when it's just written in English, you'd get um, the O, the long O, O, just replaced with an ordinary O, like in words such as dolmaji. It's usually written without that symbol uh, above it or without a U or something after it. Um, and often you get the E accented, like in the Pokemon uh, logo, so people don't think it's Pokemon or something. Now, it, real quickly, in order to uh, understand, or some ways to learn these, if you want to learn kana, I suggest just handwriting most of them repetitively until you memorize them. You can also look up online like quizzes to test if you know them. And for kanji, um, you likely won't actually be writing these most of the time. In modern day, you're usually just typing or reading them. So I'd recommend using something like Anki, which is uh, spaced repetition flashcards, free Libre application, although you do have to pay for the iOS apps, which you can still just use in a web browser apparently. But nonetheless, um, these help, it's a way of like getting you to memorize them, although I will not be talking about that too much in this video. Uh, and that's all. Thanks for watching.